Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? It's great to have you all here. It's a good day. We're going to try and do a little bit more trading today. Yesterday, I did a beautiful, wonderful lecture. <laughs> I actually went back and listened to it, and I thought, you know what? You're so smart, Lynn. You're so brilliant. <laughs> Just kidding. But it was a pretty good lecture, you have to admit. I would recommend if you didn't get a chance to see that video yesterday, you should go and watch it. It's the one just previous to this one. And I gave a good lecture, I thought. And uh, anybody who wants to learn a little bit about trading and the probabilities of trading and how margin accounts work and how the futures markets work, and I thought it was a good lesson. I even enjoyed watching it over again myself. So go watch that lesson that you might have missed yesterday. We're going to try. I didn't do any trading yesterday. It was all I meant to, but we talked about a lot of markets. We analyzed a lot of markets, show you how that's done. Talked about the probabilities and how we trade based on probabilities. And so <clears throat> that's what we were looking for, <clears throat> right? That's what we talked about yesterday. And so today we're going to just kind of follow through. And what I want to do is I want to try something new. All right, today. And it's not really that new, but it is a little bit new to what we generally do here in this channel. And so what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to start trading on the stock market with options and show you how that's done. Not that we can't do that here. We can certainly do that here in the futures market too. And we've done a little bit of that. And maybe we'll do a little bit more of that. But I want to go in and yesterday, um, after I got done with this class, I went over and day traded the options market. Uh, in the stock market, and I just day traded with it uh, based on the on the ways that we generally day trade, which is finding the explosive markets. And, uh, you know, rather than putting shares on, I put options on. And it worked like a charm. It worked great. So, um, you know, I do a little bit of that now and again. I thought, hey, that'd be fun to show the class. So today we're going to kind of do something a little different. We're not just going to watch the futures market. We're going to watch the futures market here for a few minutes. Just for the few, first few minutes, we're going to set our boundaries, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, jump over to the stock market and trade it with options. So let's watch the futures market just for a few minutes, and then we'll jump over there. All right. So let's get this started. The bell rang. Up in the upper left-hand corner is the Russell. Up in the right-hand corner is the Russell. Oh, down in the left-hand corner is the Russell. Down in the bottom right-hand corner is also the Russell. The five-minute chart is the Russell down here that looks so nice and smooth and beautiful. That's the five-minute chart. The 15 minute chart is over here on the left hand side. Up on top, we have the one minute chart and the range bar 10. Now, I've been experimenting with different range bar time frames. Uh, Lan, I thought you just did everything the same every single time. No, it doesn't work that way. Sometimes I change things up. I always looking to fine tune my strategies and fine tune the way that um, the markets are working or the way that the software is working or how to look at different things. And I've been doing some testing and I want to try range bar 10 for a little bit, see if that doesn't help a little bit. All right. And I've changed, uh, and I want to, and I actually changed up the ATR for a little bit in here. I had that set at 10 for a little bit. And what that does, it kind of changes the dynamics of the indicator a little bit. And I've had good luck with that. So I want to kind of just try it. Let's try it. Should we try it? I've been using 10 up here instead of one. Now, what that does, it pulls the, pulls the indicator away from the market in the beginning and then it still accelerates up into it a little bit towards the end but by doing that you can see even down here on the on the on the 15 or on the five minute chart how you can control that and how it pulls it away a little bit now we wells wilder is the one who wrote this software this not software but he's the one who wrote that indicator right wells wilder and wells wilder also wrote the parabolic SAR, which is also another very popular uh, popular tool tool for trading. Um, parabolic stop and reverse is what that what that stands for. And you'll notice the parabolic SAR, and I've got it set pretty aggressive here too. I'm going to set it to the TNT defaults. You'll see that it holds your your trailing stop and your entry quite significantly away from the market, and it does that for two reasons. First of all, when a market goes up and turns around and starts to come back down, it doesn't just go, it doesn't usually, now sometimes it does, but it doesn't usually just go up and then turn around and bam, V recovery come right straight back down. Usually it has this little top thing that happens, right? A little kind of a little 
A, B, C pattern up in there, a little fall, a little bounce, a little fall before it falls once again. So again, remember what's happening there is that the, the market's rallying up, the scalpers or traders decide to get out, right? The short-term traders get out, it falls, the market falls, and then they put stops in there for those who people take people who take shorts. And so that forces the market to go back up, hit those stops, and then there's nobody buying, so it turns around and it falls once again. And that's a very common pattern at the top of a trend. So you generally see, you'll see that happen a lot like, like that is a perfect example there on the five-minute chart where the market rallies up, falls back down, goes back up. And oftentimes we as speculators will anticipate a Fibonacci projection or extension off of that. And so we'll take that first green candle to make a new high and anticipate a rally. And if it doesn't, that's where we do our reversal strategy, right? And we can reverse and catch that next trend coming down. So this is kind of a common strategy. And Wells Wilder, he knows that. And so he knew that. He's still alive. And so when he um, he wrote this indicator, he wrote it so that it would kind of bypass, as you can see, that little topping formation and actually wait for the market to turn and start to come back down before he would re-enter the market to the short side. And that's what that does. Now, he also wrote the ATR, the average true range, and he set it up to be basically the same thing, but it's a lot more aggressive. You can see on a shorter term time frame, it's way more aggressive, but he actually set it up to be less aggressive than the parabolic star, believe it or not. It's just Leon Turner goes through and makes it more aggressive. So let's come in here and blow this chart up a little bit so you can see it. Come over here to the ATR and his settings. If you go to the TNT default, you can see his settings are a little bit less aggressive. So what he does is sets it at 20 and 2 as his default, and then he uses it as a less aggressive indicator. I'm going to make those dots just a little bit bigger for you so you can see them. Let's go over to the parabolic star. We'll make them a little bit bigger here. We'll make them smaller when we go back to the smaller window. But for this example, now you can see where the, the ATR actually intercepts down here. Because it actually kind of slows down, his mathematical model slows down as it starts to, market starts to accelerate. And the idea behind that is that, you know, it's going to anticipate that the market is going to continue in the trend. And so it backs off a little bit and lets the market wobble and grow. But for me here on the markets, I've, I don't, the markets don't do that very often. Now, it's great and wonderful when they do. And we love that, right? But they don't do that very often. What they've been doing, especially in these indexes in the futures market, is they make these little rolling waves, right? They make these little ABC patterns. And they're not, and then and the market makes these such big rolling waves like this. When it when it does this, it doesn't give the ATR a chance to to ever really kind of, you know, the market's not explosive just going straight up like that and if it did the atr on the slower settings would work really good but the market doesn't do that very often we've had uh we, we haven't had what we call parabolic moves in the market now this is called the parabolic uh indicator he calls it the wilder's parabolic um indicator time and price indicator but the markets haven't been moving parabolically in these indexes they don't move parabolically which means they don't just go shooting up, 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 up very often. That's not very common. doesn't mean it can't. It does. And when we have news events, the markets can do that. But we tend to discover that the markets roll a little bit more like this, right? Roll through these different trends, whether it's here on a five-minute chart or down on a one-minute chart or even down on a range bar 10 chart, right? We get the rolling effect a little bit more, a little bit stronger, which is the ABC pattern effect. It just doesn't kind of push through as strong as we would like to see for that ATR. So let's turn on the ATR over here. Well, uh, actually, it's on. Let's turn on the parabolic SAR over here on this range bar 10, and let's take a look at it. So there's the parabolic SAR, and we're going to come in. We're going to set them back to the TNT defaults, which is the defining factor, right, of what, what old Wells Wilder was doing. So there you can see that this market not being very parabolic, right, so that's why the ATR, you can see, is a little bit lazier in its stance, and it keeps you into the market longer because it's trying to capture these markets that are not parabolic. So that's what the parabolic SAR is. And what I like to do is I like to come in and capture the little smaller moves. You know, maybe I am kind of a half half wit. I'm a half wit. I'm halfway between a a, a, a scalper 
and the trend trader. I, I kind of do a little bit of both. That's why I have the strategy called the scalp and trail, right? So when we get into a market, we want to scalp into a market, uh, take a little bit off to pay for the expenses, cover our costs, and then let the other one trail. But if you're going to do that, one has to be an aggressive trading strategy and the other has to be a more lackadaisical trading strategy. And so the whole idea is that the parabolic SAR is a little bit more lackadaisical in its default settings. And then the pair, the, or excuse me, the ATR is a little bit more relaxed settings with the relaxed settings from the default settings, the yellow dots versus the parabolic SAR, which is a little bit more aggressive. I like to go in and I like to make the ATR more aggressive than the actual, actually than the parabolic SAR. So that's why I come down and I bring this all the way down. And I generally run it on a period of one. And that makes it more aggressive. Well, it didn't make it more aggressive <clears throat> at this point because it's the actual stop factor that I make more aggressive. And I bring that all the way down, as you can see, and I'll oftentimes run that around one. And sometimes if the market's very smooth and trendy, I'll bring it down all the way to five. And it gets very aggressive in there. And the reason that is because once a market gets very aggressive and starts to really flow hard, um, I'm using these Hike and Ashy bars. And the Hike and Ashy bars kind of a totally different world. And so what it does is it automatically puts all of these, the high and Ashy bars put all of these, uh, puts a mathematical smoothing model into the, into the price bars. And I want those trailing stops to be very similar in location to the mathematical model that builds the, the high and Ashy bars. And when that happens, you know, it's a close trailing stop. And so you get stopped out more easily, which is more of the scalping side of things, I would guess. Uh, you could say. So I'm kind of a, I'm a halfway, I'm halfway day trader, halfway scalper. I don't like to be a scalper. I don't want to be a scalper. Scalpers generally are in for a very short, short period of time, you know, one minute, two minutes, and they're done. That You know, that's a trade for them. I like to try and catch a longer trend. I like to get these bigger moves, but I need them to be smooth. I can't, I can't trade these choppy, choppy things if I'm going to be that aggressive with my ATR. So I like to get the one leg move, let it come back. I'm going to get out. And then when it starts to go again, I'm going to get back in. I'm going to get out, get back in, get out, get back in, get out, get back in, get out, get back in. That's kind of how I trade, which is more of a scalping style day trading strategy, right? If I was just going to be a true, true day trader, I would anticipate the turning point on this thing, right? Like right down in here, I'd anticipate that based on maybe the ATR set at the default settings. And you can see that it kind of, that's where it turned around. So I might get in there and then try and stay in just with my contracts through that whole rally all the way back up without ever exiting and getting out. And that would be the ultimate. That's why I kind of call myself a, a scalp and trail because I like to scalp, get in for these little runs and then, you know, try to catch the next bigger run as it breaks and then get out and then kind of also let one run along the way if I can. So that's the scalp and trail strategy. But if a market's too choppy, I don't like to hang in there. And the reason is because it moves in such big waves. These are big markets because um, we are trading on, a, on the mini, not the micro mini. And so this move from just down here at the bottom of this green trend to the top of that green trend, that's $235 with a $1,000 investment. This is another right here to here. That's $230. There's another $230. If you can catch a couple of those in a day, man, you're, you got $500, you're over $500 a day. And that's a lot of money. So that's kind of my goal. My goal is I set my goal for $500 a day. And when I do that, then I'm happy. doesn't mean if the markets are functioning well and I'm winning and doing well, I don't continue to trade. I do try to make more money than 500. But if I start to lose, then and I'm over my goal of $500 a day, I'd stop trading, take that money. And I like to take it over and put it in the stock market and trade trade options with it, right? And do it a little bit more investing. Um, <clears throat> Michael Bruce commented uh, on, the, on the YouTube channel on the video yesterday, and he said, hey, I've been doing a little bit more of what you've been talking about, Land, where I take your money out of the, uh, he says he likes day trading, likes to do what I do, which is day trade over here in the, in the futures market and then take that money and go over to the stock market. And he's been doing some investing in, uh, he's been looking in and, and doing some research into uh, stocks that give him 
<laughs> Can you believe that? I just had a, a brain meltdown. Never happens to me. I don't know what that is. He's been looking into dividend stocks there. It's back. Came back. So he's been looking into stocks that give him dividends and pay dividends. And so he's asked a little bit of a question about how I would recommend that. Michael Bruce, thank you for asking that wonderful question. There is an article in Pitt News Magazine. You guys all know that Pitt News Magazine is the way that I stay in touch with you guys um, and write articles about subjects that we talk about. And I have a staff of writers, and we work on writing things together, and we write articles in Pitt News Magazine, other traders that help me do this. And in the April issue of Pitt News Magazine, we talk exactly about that, Michael Bruce, what he was asking. So here's Pitt News Magazine from the April issue, and you can see it was all about inflation. That's the cover. And they got a cool cover. That's an awesome photo, <laughs> that rat eating a dollar. So anyway... The article, if we come down here, we can go to the contents, and we have one, an article in here called uh, Dividend Aristocrats. All right, so Michael Bruce has been looking into dividends, and you hit page 19. It comes down here, and we got Maximizing Returns with Dividend Aristocrats, ETFs, a Smart Investment Strategy. And so it comes through, and it actually answers a lot of the questions that you were asking, Michael Bruce, about dividends. It also gives you some uh, dividend ETFs that you might be interested in doing a little research. Now, these are great articles. I've got money in most, well, not all of them, but I got money in several of these myself for doing the exact same thing that Michael Bruce is talking about of trying to capitalize on bringing our money out of the futures market from day trading and investing it into something that has dividends. And so I have a large dividend portfolio as well. I like to do options because they're more aggressive, but you don't get dividends when you trade options, but you do when you buy the shares. Now, there's also some another um, another theory, and I will say it as a theory. Uh, this is a different article, right? This is where we got into, oh no, this is still dividend aristocrats because we come down here and we start talking about specific ETFs that you can talk about, like this has Noble, Vig, and the Fallen Angel. Those are the three uh, ETFs that have high dividends. And you can see Noble in here has demonstrated a 14.3% return annually. And so you kind of, you know, you trade these. You put your money into these stocks, and they're not, you're not going to trade them. They're not, they're, these are investments. So you're going to put your money in there and you're just going to leave it. All right. Now, I would recommend that. If you're going to add to it, you use our technical analysis strategies, which are accumulation zones, which we use the, the chalk and money flow. And this is where you might add into these markets because there is some growth potential involved in it. So it's not just, oh, put your money in there and just randomly put it in. You can. You can just set it up so, you know, every week where every two weeks when I get paid, I'm going to just put some money in there. But. I think a better way to do it is to use the chalk and money flow. And when you get down into these accumulation stages, this is where you want to add your, add your money to your portfolio. Cause you're going to, a lot of these are not just ETFs. Or, I mean, they're not just dividends. They're not just percentage of dividends being returned to you. It's part partially, partially growth. All right. So you're looking for growth as well. And so here's another one. This is the VIG. And then, of course, down here, this is the Fallen Angel. And it talks about what all these are. And we do this in Pit News Magazine all the time. We're going to give you trade recommendations, investment advice. We're working on uh, an article for the May issue. It may not come out in May. It may come out in May. what's after May, April, May, June. So it'll probably come out in the June issue. But um, we're going to come in and we're going to talk about the investment pyramid. All right, the investment pyramid. And what is the investment pyramid? Well, the investment pyramid is how you should manage your entire wealth, world of wealth. All right. So we're going to talk about the base. What should be the base? What should be the middle part? What should be the next level? And then what should be up there at the peak? What should you be doing with your money with that little peak? And so the peak side of things, you know, once you get everything all set up, that's generally your more aggressive trading. And that's what we do in the futures market. So the little piece of our component of our entire wealth world comes, you know, the, 
you know, is for what we do in this in this YouTube channel, mostly is that little peak. We don't talk a whole lot about the bottom strategies. Now we do, and we go over and we do trading and we do options and stuff, kind of the middle stuff. We don't talk a lot about the base because the base is your that's your bonds, that's your you know your IRAs, your your Roth IRAs, that's your real estate. Those those type of long term hold on investments build the the pyramid. And the pyramid base is your long-term trades. And so you take the money from your higher points in your pyramid and you bring that money down and put it into these other locations. And so uh, we're writing an article about that and um, that'll be in an, a future issue of Pit News Magazine. The great thing about Pit News Magazine, for those of you who don't have it, is that it's all audio. So you can have the notes, right? You can have all the notes that that are in a magazine, which is great. So you can say, oh, it gave me all these trade recommendations right here. But if you just listen to a podcast or something, if you're not, you know, writing it down right then, you don't, you lose it, you forget it. And you're like, oh, I'm going to try and remember that. And you don't. And so listening to a podcast is basically, you know, it's just what we call financial entertainment. It doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. It tells you stuff, but then you never remember it. So in here, we come in and we give you not only the audio, like as you might find in a in a podcast, so you can listen to the article, but you also have all this stuff written down. So now you can come back after the podcast is over. Maybe you're driving around in your car or something, and you can come back and you can look it up. You can say, oh, Land was talking about the VIG, and not only did he talk about the VIG, he had a whole chart and everything about the VIG and about the angel, and that's what's great about Pit News Magazine. That's why we do it this way. All right. So hopefully you enjoy Pit News Magazine. And we got an article to answer uh, Michael Bruce's question coming up in the in a future issue. So that's the whole idea of that. All right. Let's come back here and take a look. This market's starting to make some nice moves. We got a big run up. We get a little bump down. A, B, C. We're coming in here. I got too many things on the screen. It's causing me confusion. So I'm going to turn off that parabolic SAR. And I'm going to take my ATR. I'm going to put it back to TNT, my defaults. And right there, that's one. I'm going to try and run that up to 10 again. Let's see what that looks like. 9, 10. Uh, I still like my one a little better. I like it a little bit more aggressive. Well, it didn't change it much, does it? Just kind of changes where that stop comes in. I kind of like it a little bit looser in the beginning because I'm going to be tight in the beginning myself. And that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I need to write my own indicator, don't I? I think we'll try that. Uh, I got a couple of comments over here. Low down killer. Instead of the dividends, you can take the money you make from your futures Take money you make from your futures, invest in the stock market a week or so at a time based on results from trade miner, 5 to 10% per week or so on average. Yeah, the, lots of different ways to do it. That's a good suggestion. How about this is about the only strategy that I am can make money lately. Anything else, it's a miss. Depends on well long. I need to, to I, I can need to sit on my hands and not over trade. Yes, that's a big one. Um, low down killer. That's a big one. We have a tendency to overtrade. Uh, I even, you know, I, I talked about that yesterday quite extensively in our, in my lecture where I was saying that when we, you, uh, and I, I, and I fear sometimes that when I have you guys come to this class and I'm doing this in the demo account and I'm trading like a wild man that you guys think that's how you're supposed to trade. And you're not, that's, that's, that's not proper trading. Don't, don't trade like a wild man. The reason I do it here for us is because we're trying to learn, right? We're learning what these patterns do. We're learning what the markets do. We're learning what stop orders and limit orders do. And yeah, of course, we're trying to make money and we're trying to do that. And we're trying to demonstrate that strategy. But I'm way over trading in here because you guys don't want to come and sit and just sit on your hands for, you know, 45 minutes and land just sitting here going, well, there's no trade. I guess we'll just sit and watch the market. Well, there's no trade. You know, we do that sometimes because I'm lecturing and talking and I'm a, I'm a talkaholic. So, uh, you know, we do a lot of that. We sit on our hands um, a little bit once in a while, but mostly we're, we're way over trading. And so in my lecture yesterday, that was a large part of what I was trying to explain to people. Please don't over trade. You're supposed to, you do all, if you're going to do all your crazy experimentation, do that in the demo account. 
and then and then uh, do your your more aggressive trading. You know, you're you're very almost like a rifle. I to call it a, a shotgun approach or a rifle approach. Do your rifle approach in the in the real money account and only trade very you know very cautiously and a strategy that you know is working for you when the market is in a particular situation where the market's really trending nicely and you have a good strategy that you know works you go and that's the only time you trade real money otherwise you jump back over here to the demo account now i don't do it so much anymore but i used to when i first started trading i'd have the demo account on the left hand side of my screen and i would have the real money account on the right hand side of my screen and i would trade the demo account trade 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 demo account trade 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 and then when i'd get a setup that was just too good to be true i would jump over to the and and my live account is already here it's sitting right here i don't have to close the software open it back up i have two monitors right i'd have demo over here i'd have real money over here and i would do all of my experimental trading i'm trading along getting you know my head into the market in the demo account and then when it was time to trade real money you know, I'd get a setup that I just couldn't pass up. I would come and do it in the real money account. And I think that was, you know, that, that worked for me really well for years and years. I did that and <laughs> I haven't been doing it so much anymore. I just kind of pull up my real money account and I just sit here and wait until I get something. But I should probably go back to doing that. Actually, I should probably, you know, when I trade real money, I should probably have my demo account and my real money and I should be trading demo account. And then when I get that opportunity, go over to, I should probably go back to doing that myself rather than just trading straight up in the in the real money account so <clears throat> uh, michael bruce is saying that was the article he was exploring from pit news magazine and that's what kind of got him into into doing this so that's good that's and i you know you hear me say it all the time i like to do day trading over here in the futures market but then i like to take that money i don't keep a great big giant account over here i keep a relatively small account over here you know, 10, 15, 25, 30. If it gets up too big, I take a chunk of it out and go put it over somewhere else that's less aggressive that I, I, I don't have a tendency to lose. You know, sometimes <laughs> you blow up your accounts over here and you have to go pull money back from there and put it back over here. And so I don't want to blow up a $100,000 account over here, right? I don't need that much money over here because I don't, I don't generally try to trade those. I don't trade like that. It's just not how I do it. So I trade a smaller account, and then I just keep pull, pulling the money off. So I, I found that kind of a, a twenty-five thousand dollar account is kind of optimal for me. I like twenty-five thousand dollars. Fifty thousand, if it gets up into that size time range, I'm I, I pull it out, get it out of there. It's too much money sitting over here in the futures market. That's that's just me. Again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I like to do, and that's how I like to do it. Twenty-five thousand dollars is kind of my happy medium price range and kind of fits along with you know what they've done over there in the stock market where they say you can't day trade without twenty five thousand dollars and there's a reason behind that logic it's you're well enough capitalized that you can make some decent money but you're not risking such an enormous amount of money that if you blew your account up that it's going to put you in the poor house you know you're not going to go out and have to beg for money so <clears throat> the whole idea is just be cautious and risk money, risk and money management strategies, so that you don't uh, you don't destroy yourself. Just always have safeguards in in place. So here you go. Here's a beautiful little ABC. While we were talking, look at that. Just as clean as could be. Just as clean as could be. Where was our seven thirty bell? Seven thirty was right back here. So this thing came in at seven thirty. Was where is seven thirty? These are range bars, so one bar doesn't represent one minute. Oh, there was 7.30. That was our opening bell. That's kind of a nasty start to the day, wasn't it? 7.30 right there. That was the opening bell on the Russell with the range bar 10. Now, I say 7.30 because I'm in Utah, so it's 9.30 in, in New York. 8.30 in Chicago. And these markets are actually being traded out of Chicago. So it went for seven about 10 minutes before it started to trend nicely. And then that was the first pullback. And, of course, that's a decision point, right? The market comes down, makes the first pullback. And right there, 
that's a decision point. Are you going to take the long position in anticipation of a reversal and a continuation of the uptrend? Because you could very well justify that. You could come in here and you could say, okay, I'm going to go from here to here, down to here, and anticipate that this market's going to take off and keep going up, right? <clears throat> so that's a justification for taking a long position. But on the shorter term time frame, this market would come down. You can say, well, justification for the going short. You come down, rally up, and then it could come back down. That's your decision point right there, right? So there's your decision point. Are you going to take a short position? There's a decision point. Are you going to take a long position? <clears throat> so you have to make these decisions. And if you're wrong, you just get right back out because you have to admit you're wrong. You're not going to be right every time. I mean, you get to this type of a situation, you basically have you, know, you have a 33% chance of being right. What do you mean a 33% chance, right? It's going to either go up or down, right, Land? No, because it can go sideways. <laughs> it can go sideways. And that's a nasty thing that the market likes to do too. So we got to be careful with that. If the markets only could go up and down, we'd all be rich, rich, rich beyond our wildest dreams. But they don't. What kills us is when a market goes sideways. It's a sideways market that destroys our accounts. And we just keep trading through a sideways market. If you can avoid trading through sideways markets, then trading is, you know, it's relatively easy. Because you think you get a signal to go long, and if it can't go sideways, it's going to go long. Or if it can't go up, it's going to turn and go down. Well, then you could say, well, I'm going to reverse, and it's going to go down. If a market's trending nicely, it's going to do that, right? It's going to go up or down. And that makes trading easy. What's not easy is when a market doesn't trend. It just goes sideways. Sideways markets are killers. Those are what kills you. So you got to be careful and not trade through sideways markets. Well, how do I know if a market's going to go sideways? You don't. You just have to say, well, I'm going to do this. And if it gets me out, I'm going to just get out, right? Lots of strategies. Lots of strategies. Now, notice yesterday we talked about probabilities and we talked about the three drive pattern, right? Remember that? So there's, look at this. This is drive one. It's your counter trend. Drive two. It's your counter trend. Drive three. Doesn't mean it can't go up and give us a little counter trend and turn around and go down and make a drive four, a little counter trend, drive five. No, it certainly can. But the likelihood of that happening is less. Now we're on a range bar 10. So we're on a tiny little time frame. So very easily could. That's why we look at multiple time frames to see what other markets are doing. So even up here, this is the one minute chart. You can see you got drive one, you got your little counter trend, you got drive two, you got a little counter trend. We're going into drive three on the one minute chart. So if you come over and compare that to what's happening here, you may get that fourth drive on the range bar chart just simply because it's a smaller time frame and we haven't got three drives on the on the one minute chart. So we might get that what looks like a fourth drive in the Russell over here on the range bar chart. Okay, so it's starting to drop. You can see that right here. And then you come and look at the 15 minute chart and we got basically, eh, you could almost say there's three drives on there, but they're really ugly. The thing about the 15 minute chart is it doesn't, it's, I don't like to day trade on the 15 minute charts. It's kind of choppy. And then down here, this is the five minute chart. Now, a lot of people trade on the five minute charts, very common to see people trading on the five-minute chart. And the reason is because it's a little smoother, right? A little smoother. Let's turn those. Uh, let's go back to the chart overlay. Overlay preferences for the ATR. And we're going to make those dots smaller again. We made them bigger for the bigger screen. And we'll turn off the parabolic SAR. It's just a little bit too slow, the parabolic SAR, when we're trying to, to trade these little small moves in the market. And we oftentimes can't get our stops moved to break even before it turns around and goes the other way. Um, because these markets really are very stable, and that's why we don't get these big, huge parabolic moves, and we can't really use the parabolic indicator. All right, so now we're coming in on the one-minute chart into that third drive down, which is the fourth drive down. You get a lot of smaller moves here on the range bar 10, right, because it's a smaller macro view of the market. So the market needs to be a little bit more aggressive, needs to be a little bit more parabolic when trading the range bar charts to get yourself into a situation where you can make, make a profit. We're going to loosen that just a tiny bit over here on the, on the one minute chart. Now remember this, I'm just moving those green dots, which is where you want your stop to be. And you can determine how tight you want your stop by moving that little stop factor. And that's what we're doing. Okay. 
So that's that's the S&P. I think we've given ourselves enough time to come over and let's go over and look in the stock market now. All right. So I'm going to pull up. I said I put in our little marquee out front, right? I put that we were going to day trade stocks. So how are we going to day trade stocks? How have I been doing this? Um, sometimes, I mean, we hold on to stocks for a longer period of time. I cleaned up a little bit yesterday, got rid of some of the, the dead wood that was in here. This is our this is our portfolio for the class, our classroom portfolio. And so uh, I cleaned up some of the dead wood out of here yesterday. And so we're sitting on about four grand in profits. But let's go do a little day trading. Now, how do we decide what we're going to day trade with options? Well, we need some explosive markets that actually have options on them. And, of course, the way I do that is with this little scanner. You guys are all familiar. I've talked about it in the past. We're going to come back to here. And the scanner is Finviz. And I use Finviz. If you go to Finviz Home and you pull it up, now I'm not associated with Finviz. I, I don't know many, many if you use this tool. This is just a tool I like. I like Finviz, little company. And I click on this uh, heat map down here in the right-hand corner. Now, I'm not a real fan of that heat map. I'm, this is not where I really spend my time. I like this little bubble heat map. And this thing is just as neat as sliced bread. I mean, we come in there and we click on that thing. And we come down, we have this little bubble. And you can see it starts out at zero right here on the left-hand side. And then if the market increases in value, it goes up. If the market decreases in value, it goes down. Now, I like to have specific settings to do my day trading off of here. So I come in here and I look at market capital. I change that to volume. Okay, so each one of these little balls in here represents a different stock in whatever sector you choose. Now, I like to start with the S&P 500 because the S&P 500 has 500 stocks and they're all great stocks. That's why they're in the S&P 500 or they wouldn't be in there. If they weren't great stocks, they wouldn't be in the S&P 500. And most of them have options. Not all, but most have options. And some, you know, many of the ones who do have options there's not enough volume or open interest to trade them, so you can't trade them anyway. But you have to kind of filter those out. If you want less than 500 to choose from, there's always the NASDAQ 100. And most all of these all have great options. You see Apple's really on fire today, and it's about damn time. And we got down here Dow Jones Industrial Average. Apple, again, is is kind of kicking, kicking ass and taking names. And Apple was doing well yesterday. I went in and bought a bunch of Apple yesterday. And we can go look at Apple just for fun. Let's go pull up Apple. I have it right here. So it took off. And the reason I bought a bunch yesterday is because we finally got a little explosive move in here, right? And it's down here after three drives. So we got a nice three drive pattern down. Drive one, drive two, drive three. And we actually got a kind of a blow off top ABC top formation up in here. So we had two drives up and then that failed to the upside. We got the, the failure that came in here. We got that again, as I talked about earlier, you don't generally get a complete just flat V recovery. You get this little ABC pattern up on top. And that's what happened here in Apple. And then it couldn't break and continue higher. It got too much of a pullback all the way back into the red bars. When that happens, we generally consider that a three bar pattern reset. And then we look for three more bars. Now we were looking for this to be A and we were looking for B and C and to go up and it didn't. Apple's not been participating. I'm not going to get into that lecture because I've given it in the past about how I've been frustrated with Apple. But finally, they come in here with a three drive pattern to the downside. And when that broke down in there, and you can see it came down and it started touching these previous lows down in here. We had strong areas of, of support. Oh, got my wrong tool. Grab the right tool, man. So we got the areas in here of support. And so you ended up with this nice area of support down in here. And I was looking for it on the third drive to bounce off of that. So this was very much me and a whole bunch of other technical analysts, right? People who know this kind of thing. They knew that this would be a great buying spot, an opportunity to get in and take some Apple. So Apple has turned. And, of course, you're going to get the, the MSNBCs and the CBAs and the SNBCs and all those different companies are going to come along. And now they're going to tell you how wise and smart they are and why Apple is. They're going to give you all the fundamental reasons why Apple is rallying. Really, the reason is because it got down here into a great buy zone based on previous technical analysis, and that's where everybody started to buy mathematically calculated positions. And then the MSNBC is going to go and make you make up a whole bunch of stories about why Apple's a good buy right now. And so they always do after the fact. They're always losers over there. We don't like those guys. Don't listen to them. They're going to sell you a new car and soap. The news is the news, which comes up here, and the technical analysis, right? We know what the news is. The news is this stuff here. We talked about that yesterday once again. So this is the good stuff right here. This is where you're going to get your news. 
Let's refresh that. Today is Friday. 6.30, uh, we had the export numbers. The Michigan consumer sentiment came in at 8 o'clock, which was 10 minutes ago, which is why we got that little bump. They always say that. They always put that in red, and I don't know why they put that in red. It should just be, it's an impact too. It has not got a red impact on the market, but they do it anyway. I think it's the most politics or something. I don't know why they tag that thing red, but the Mich Michigan Consumer Index doesn't usually move the market all that much. Sometimes it does. I, yeah, all right. Sometimes I'll give it to them. Sometimes they move the market a little bit, but for the most part, I don't think it should be a red. It's not that big, but which makes it nice, right? Because we don't like the ones that are really wild and crazy. They go too hard and then we can't trade them. So the little bit medium sized ones are actually the better ones to trade. So the Michigan Zoom Consumer Index at eight o'clock, that was. So what happened at eight o'clock right there? Michigan's Consumer Index came out and the market just continued right down, just like nothing. Just like that okay there's a consumer index here's your michigan consumer index so obviously it was shitty news shitty news <laughs> we haven't had anything but shitty news lately we had a whole string of good news for a while and the markets were going to the moon now we're getting all the shitty news of course i think that you know it's like wagging the dog is the tail wag the dog or does the dog wag the tail the reason we get shitty news is because the market is going down. So they tell you why the market's going down, and then they give you all the shitty news. You know, that's, the market's going up, so they give you all the good news. Why is the market going up? And mostly, I don't think it has anything to do with the news. Most of what the market does, it does it because it's all a mathematical model, and it's manipulated by the black rocks of the world. And so we just can kind of ride along like little ants on an elephant's ass. So that's us. We're the ants on an elephant's ass, and all we can do is take the trance. So anyway, that's why Apple's doing well. It caught down here to the bottom of the drive, third drive at the area of support, and it turned, and people started to buy it. That's why Apple's going up. Now, we need some fundamental reasons why Apple's a good buy, and Apple should be a good buy. We all love Apple. Apple's a great company, got great products. We all want Apple to do well. So, But now this has given us an opportunity to buy low, sell high, and that's that's it. There you go. Great company. Great opportunity to buy low, sell high. You can see the, the option that we bought yesterday. Um, we bought that option right there. That's a call option. We bought that yesterday. Day traded it with a day trade option, and it's doing well. And, of course, I did this in my real money account. I got money in Apple. I'm very happy about that. Got two options on Apple. So uh, we got two options right here, too. These are the options I've got on Apple. So there we go. Let's go down to... Uh, Datadog. Datadog was one we traded a little bit yesterday. We put a little bit of money on that thing. And uh, it was a little scalper. So we're going to come in and we're going to, let's just drop a stop in here. What are we in? We're with 100 shares. Why we got to, let's go 100 shares. And we're going to just drop our stop in here, break even. That way, if it comes back down, we'll just get out. We don't want to take a loss. Otherwise, we'll let her run, let her rip, right? All right, let's go in and we're going to go over to back over to finviz wait a second where did finviz go how come fin oh it's down here land get your shit together okay here we go back over to finviz and we're going to go into the s p 500 so there's s p 500 and gl is one that everybody's got their eyes on it went up 16 percent. that's the biggest one 16 percent you can go look at all of them, anything. PXMD, that's only a $1 share. Now, a lot of scalper day traders are going to be trading that right there. PXMD, look how big the circle is. Just for fun, let's go look at it. PXMD. These are our pump and dumps. PXMD. Ooh, that thing's been going nowhere for a long time and suddenly jumped. So let's go down to the one-minute chart and take a look at it. That's what the one-minute chart looks like on the bulls and bears. Kind of a little choppy. It kind of run a little bit, broke, run a little bit, pulled back, starting to run a little bit, turn on the high ashy bars, see it smooth it out a little bit. You know, that night, it looks like it wants to go, it wants to make a little rebound and start to go once again. We got a little pull back in here. Got a little rally, pull back. Maybe we'll get another little rally up, and we'll come up and maybe test that previous high. 
I don't know. It looks like it's kind of lost its juice here. I had this big downtrend after I had this big move up. Kind of want to see if it wants to move, stay higher. It's got to stay higher. It's got to have higher highs. Here, little tail coming out the bottom of that one's not very good. We got volumes not very strong. Don't feel real good about it yet. Let's see. It's going to come down if it breaks the bottom. Can we put an option on it? That's the question. No, obviously not. So let's come back here. Spotify is our big one. Look at that. We're making good money on Spotify. That's not very active. Let's let's go back over to, okay. Oh, and it just broke. So that's a good thing we didn't get into it. All right. Let's go back over to, okay, PXMD. Now these are all the, uh, here's another one for day traders. That's a 10 cent stock. That's a 28 cent stock. That's why I don't look at these very often. Come in here and we'll, oh, not sector. We're going to go to volume and we're going to go to index and we're going to go back to the S&P 500. We're going to see if we can't find something. So there's GL, Global Life. That's a $56 stock. Oh, look, it crushed it though. Yesterday it fell like a rock. That's why it's rebounding a little bit. Let's go look at GL and see how it's performing. GL. Global Life. Oh, it's still crushing down. That's a tough market right there. Go to the one-minute chart. What did it do? I had a yesterday rebound. So yesterday's rebound. So 6, 7, 7.30 right here. This is the opening bell. This is the pre-market session. The market pre-market session, it was up big. It's falling down. Rally. This is all downtrend stuff, isn't it? So this is your this is your big rally up. And then this is our ABC top formation. So we're going A, B, C. And we're going to anticipate that thing's going to come tumbling down. Tumbling, tumbling, tumbling down. It's coming a little bit more like this, isn't it? Let's bring that little leg out there. A little Fibonacci projection tool timeline. Well, man, you could global life. You could buy a put option. Well, yes, we could. If we thought that thing was going to keep falling down. Now, we want the shortest. If we're going to day trade, I like to do two days. I don't. When I'm going to do options, sometimes you can do a zero DTE. We did, I generally do those over in the futures market, but we can do zero days to expiration in the stock market if it's available. But the shortest we got right here is a seven day. So we're going to come over here. Seven days is not bad. What if the market, you know, what if it turns and goes and you can and you decide to hang on to it longer? That's okay. Hang on to it for a day or two. It can still be a short-term trade. That's what this is all about. This little lesson is it. You know, I like to do at least a couple of days in the in the option because it maintains value that way. It doesn't die quite so quickly. That last day, that zero DTE option, it dies very fast. If you get a two-day option, they know they have to hold it overnight. And so if they sell it to you, it has to maintain a little bit of value because they don't know what it's going to do the next day, right? So your option will maintain a little bit of an increased value. You can see that we got a volume is at 1200. We got open interest. Oh, this is the call. This is the put. This is the calls. We got to go to the calls, the puts. $875. Now, this is like $875. We're not risking $875 because we're not going to keep this thing until expiration. Um, it's like thinking in your mind. It's like, okay, over in the futures market, I'm trading and I have to put up $1,000 to put on one contract, right? But you're not risking $1,000. Because you're not going to, you know, you're, you're just not risking it. That's your performance bond. Think about this kind of like that. It's your performance bond, all right? It's going to lose. It's premium per unit. It's going to lose about $8 in premium today. That's nothing. You don't have to worry about that. Eight bucks. It's going to do that in a couple of little ticks anyway. So on the theta decay, on this seven-day option, it's only going to lose $8 today on theta decay. The intrinsic value is going to lose and gain a lot more than eight dollars. So think about the eight seventy five is kind of the very same concept as what your margin is over in the futures market. You're going to put up eight hundred dollars, but you're not going to risk eight hundred dollars because you're not going to lose eight hundred dollars because you're not going to stay in the market that long. Okay, so you're going to just use it as a way of trading. Now, do you need to have twenty five thousand dollars in your account to do this over here? You do if you're going to get in and liquidate it in the same day. If you're going to hold it overnight, you don't have to. You don't have to have $25,000, but if you're going to day trade it, which means you're going to get in and out in the same day, even with options, yes, you still have to, you still have to have that money, but we can come in here and let's say we think this market's going to continue down. We'll just go ahead and we'll, 
let's go ahead and we'll buy a put option. And, uh, oh, that's, we're on a one minute chart. So that's okay. That's a pretty wide spread. You sometimes, you know, I'm trading, let's get, I like to go out a little bit longer time frame. Let's make this a two minute chart just for starters. So we're coming into a, kind of a wedge triangle pattern. So let's see on this one. This thing's kind of got this little wedge pattern thing going in here, doesn't it? And we got an arrow indicating that it should fall out the bottom, but it could recover and go back up. Put one on, put a, put a, put a, put a straddle on land, put a strangle on land, do a fancy thing, put a bull call spread on land. You could do all those things. But right now, we're just going to keep it simple. We're just going to buy a put or buy a call. We're just going to day trade it like we are as if we were buying shares, only we're going to do it with an option. If we're going to do it, this is a $57 share. So if we were going to buy just contract and you put on 100, 100 shares, that's going to be $5,760. Well, I don't want to put on $5,760. I'm going to put on $875. And that is going to be kind of like putting on 49 shares. See, that's the delta. So the delta shows you 49 shares. So this market's not really moving. <laughs> it's not making, it's not doing anything. It's just sitting here. Let's go look at something else. So GL, we got that one in there and it's kind of skewing the, the chart. So let's get rid of it. And we're down here in the very bottom. See that exclude ticker? We can come down here and we can put in GL. We can take that one out. Okay, so now NEM is the next one, Newmont Corp, and it's up. So $40.96 per share, Newmont Corp. Let's go NEM. Trade. Oh, it's fallen. Let's put one on. Let's go ahead while we're still here. Options. Let's buy a put. Buy a put. Seven days. Which one should we buy? Let's buy this one. And, well, now I'm getting... Because this pattern is too bullish. I mean, this is coming down into this lower region here. It's going to probably turn and go back up. But it could fall and go. It's decision point, right? It's decision point. Oh, shit, or get off the pot, man. Okay. We'll watch it. We'll see. Okay, so now we're going to come back over to our... Yeah, I forgot what the symbol was. NEM, 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 NEM. Where did where to go? Didn't I type it in? NEM. Okay, so that one's starting to rally. Boom, boom, boom. That's a daily chart, so that's why we're getting that in there. Let's come down to the two minute chart. NEM, NEM. Starting to go. People are watching it. Let's come in here. Option. We got a zero DTE or we got a seven day. Let's look at the zeros. Call option. $21. <laughs> well, that's kind of tiny. Tiny. Let's go out and let's do seven days. $79. $79 for a call option on this market. Control 48 shares. Buy. Oh, it started to move without me. 129. Let's do this one. Market. Okay, so we got that one on. So we got two positions on. This one and this one. Okay, so now. Let's go see if we can find another one. Dun, 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 dun. NEM. I haven't really got anything else. We're already in Apple. There's Oxy. It's kind of up there. Uh, Illum, but it's look how tiny the little circle is. There's not very many people trading. It's $134 a share. PGR, $206 a share. What's Oxy? $70. Circle's a little bit bigger. Uh, what's this one? Wells Fargo. I don't like Wells Fargo. Citigroup. Oh, Citigroup. 
City Group has got a nice pattern to it. So Oxy or City Group? Let's go look at City Group. C I T I, isn't it? What's the symbol for City Group? Why don't they show it? Oh, it's just C. Daily. Oh, look at this thing. Oh, my goodness. Drive one, drive two, drive. I'm going to combine those. There's just one little dot. So we'll say that's the top of drive three. Drive three, possibly even drive four if you wanted to be anal retentive. And then it gave us this little thing here. And then we expect it to make this little thing here. And then another little thing here, right? So that'd be your first drive down, I would say. I think Citigroup is a short. Citigroup is a short if you want to take a short. Let's go down to a two-minute chart on Citigroup. Oh, it's not very pretty. Let's come down here testing these lows right now. It's got a nice little move down. It's getting ready to do a counter trend. And then I would look for the next leg down. Right? Because we are in a downtrend. Get a little pop up and then another downtrend. Not ready to put anything on. Well, it could just, well, it's going sideways. It's going sideways. It could just fall right out of the bottom here and not ever hit those blue lights. Justify land. What are you going to do? Markets can only do three things. They can go up, they can go down, they can go sideways. Yes, but when they go sideways, they can go sideways for a very long time. Kind of annoying about markets. Oh, look at that. It's dropping. We bought a put option. We did buy a put option, didn't we? We did buy a put option, and it's coming in our favor. How come we went from $15 to $20? How come we're losing money when the market came down? That's weird. Newmont Corp, five fifty. Oh, look, we're making money. We're up five dollars and fifty cents on our Newmont Corp stock. What is the daily chart look on that? Oh, it's kind of at the top of a first drive, isn't it? Ooh, that's all one great big long up drive. So we would call this the A one, right? This would be we kind of got this little pullback in here. I'm going to call that. A2. So that is A2. This is A3. A3 is not generally a good place to be trying to get into a new position, and that's what this is. It's a new position. So we're not going to think this is going to go to the moon and going to make us rich, rich, rich beyond our wildest dreams. Doesn't mean it can. It certainly can. But it's just not the probabilities. What are the probabilities? The probabilities tell us that this market is going to do what? It's going to come up here and break this high, probably test that high up there, maybe a day or two more. And then it's going to come back and break those blue lights. And then it's going to come back with a counter trend and it's going to go back up at that point. So we would want to be a buyer going into the B drive back in here. Now, we don't want it to come back far enough to get red red bars. If it gets one or two, uh, we'll go okay. If it goes yellow and then green again, then we'll be okay. and We'll take it and we'll go long. But we don't want to see it come back and make red bars. We want it to just come back and make yellow bars and then turn and go green again. And then we'll jump on board for the longer term trend on Newmont Corp. Right now, we're just day trading it down here on a two-minute chart, trying to see if we can't get a little acceleration out of here. Obviously, we should have been looking at this market a little sooner and got in right there. That would have been a better place for us to get in on this. But the question was, if it was, yeah, I think it would have, because this is the morning bell, 5 o'clock this morning, or the, the opening session. This is the pre-market session. So it did explode out. That was kind of our call to arms. Hey, everybody, come and look at Newmont stock today. We're going to run this baby. So they got in at the very first of the 5 o'clock this morning. That's what sets it up on the scanner to pop up higher than all the rest of the little balls, right? So then that's the one that makes everybody come running. And then that's the market goes up. And that's why the market goes up because they, they manipulated us. What did they do? They popped it at five o'clock in the morning so that it would be the top one on the scanners and show you, Hey, we're the best one today. Come and trade us. And then once the market opened at seven 30, right here, seven 30, you get your signal and up it goes. 
So that's how these things work, right? You think these markets aren't manipulated? You're, 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 you're up in the night. They are manipulated with a capital M. This is J.P. Morgan Chase. He's struggling, and we're in. We were looking at Citigroup. J.P. Morgan Chase. Let's go look at J.P.M. Good old J.P.M. Biggest bank in the world just fell out of bed. J.P.M. If you want to know what's going on news-wise, and you're like, well, what in the heck happened? You can go over to FinBiz, and they'll tell you. You can go JPM here. It'll pull up the chart, and then you can come down here, and you can see all the statistics on it. You can see all the daily stuff. You can see all the earnings per share, the sales, the shares in outstanding shares. Look, they've been buying back their shares. Why did they do that? They're buying back their shares when they got, man, look at their sales. Holy smolies. Holy shamolies. And then you got all the news. Jamie Dimon says, don't be surprised if the economy hits a wall. He said that today at 10 o'clock and his stock went to the toilet. Boom. Bank stocks mixed as JP Morgan Wells Fargo report. Investors Business Daily, 9.49 a.m. These stocks are our moving the most today, Barron's. These stocks are moving the most today. J.P. Morgan, Chase, Citigroup, AMD, Intel, Artesia, and more. Pretty darn cool, man. So these are all your numbers. It's all your fundamental numbers. All right. Let's go back over. Let's go back over to our scanner. There's Wells Fargo. That's another one they said was falling out of bed. So J.P. Morgan really flushed. J.P.M. Look at that thing. But hey, what were the probabilities? Drive one, drive two. That's a little drive right there. It only broke it, but that's drive three. Just like out of the manual. What manual you keep talking about, Land? I tell you every day, my manual. Just go get it. It's out on the. It's out on Amazon. Stock market playbook of strategies in the manual all this stuff that we're talking about with all these probability tables i talked about it at great length yesterday in the class yesterday's class please go get the manual and learn about these probabilities right here this is the probabilities table it tells you what the probabilities are for all these moves and it gives you the probability so it not only teaches it to you and shows you how to label them like we were doing earlier it also shows you the probabilities it has a probability table in here Okay, so here's the probability section right here. Gauging entry equality. So that's where it comes in and we talk about the A's, the A section, the B section. See that right there? B1, B2, B3, C, C1, C2, A1, A2, A3. It's all right in here. And then I show you actual real-life examples of markets I traded. And then also I give you all the probabilities right here. What's the probability of an A1, B1, C1? What's the probability of an A2, B2, C2, medium probability, A3, A4, low probability? So X1, X2, X3, high probability, low probability, medium probability. It's all in there. It's all in the book. Just go get it. It's the manual to the class, and um, it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Just search Lion H. Turner. It pops right up. You have that paper in your fingers. All right, so three drive pattern, drive one, drive two, drive three. You want to be a buyer at the top of the third drive? Probably not. A lot of people do. They go in there and they're like, oh, this market's doing well. I think I'll buy it. <laughs> okay, do that then. Knock yourself out. Got to learn the probabilities, buddies. All right, so I'm trying to get this market to come down a little bit. Global life. This is GL. We put our put option on there. It's actually kind of coming down, just not fast enough for us to make it profitable. Getting another little push here. See if it'll drop one more time. We're down 20 bucks on it. We had to pay $15 in spread. Spreads right now at 40 bucks. This is not a good one to trade because it's just the spread's really wide. But we're making a little bit of money over here on Newmont. We're up $17.50 with a $130 investment. Why didn't you buy 10 of them, Lan? It's a good 
good question. If we bought 10 of them, we'd be up 190 bucks. And we'd only have a $1,000, $1,300 investment. But then I had how many spreads? $2 per spread. But that's all right. We're up $1,919. So let's go. There's nothing really moving. Oftentimes you'll come in here, you know, because the overall market is down. I mean, the S&P hit the five five drive pattern, right? And it's coming down. You're not getting a lot of stocks that are rallying. We can go back and look at, let's go back and look at Apple again. Apple had this explosive move up first thing. Now it's coming back against us. We're going to wait for this. We're going to wait for it to come down here and intercept those blue lights. When it intercepts those blue lights, we're going to take another long, we could, we could buy an option there. You could kind of try and preempt it. It's coming down, right? And then we're going to expect the ABC pattern like this. A, B, C, D land. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Just like that. Just like that. It's in the book. Go get the manual. Show you how to do it. All right. And then come and join us here in these classes. Once you've read the manual, you'll understand what I'm doing. And you can do it too. It's the whole idea, right? You can do it too. Uh, teach a man to fish. Show a man to fish. Which would you prefer? Teach a man. Show a man. Isn't that the same thing? Give a man a fish. All right. Oh, there's um, Brian saying, giving us a little information about uh, NEM. It's the largest gold miner on the planet and the old gold miner in the S&P 500. Gold is way up today on Middle East saber rattling. I have a lot of gold. I have some gold. Do we have gold in this? There's gold. You are right. Gold is up big today. That's good for me. Where's my need to be looking at my real money account today. There's Bitcoin. Bitcoin's not doing anything. It's kind of sitting on its hands right now. Getting ready for Bitcoin to break out. Uh, they're doing a halving. If you don't know about Bitcoin, we're writing an article for Pit News Magazine all about Bitcoin. I don't think it's going to make it in the in the uh, April, May, May issue. I don't think we're going to make it in the May issue. We're, it's going to probably be in the June issue all about Bitcoin. But Bitcoin is coming into a halving right now where they're going to release more Bitcoin. And so they're expecting a big explosive growth. They 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 do that every now and again. They do these halvings, and they they know when they're going to do them. They have them on a calendar. You can go look it up. And that's sometime April something here in a couple of days, April 15th or April 28th or something like that. So we're going to have a halving, and then they expect the market to probably flush a little bit, which might give you a buying opportunity. But then it goes to the moon. Whether it's going to even flush is the question. It's going through the sideways channel right now. I have a lot of Bitcoin. I've made a lot of money in Bitcoin. I've rid this, rid, rid? I rid this thing. I rid this thing all the way up. That whole run right there. I rid that whole run all the way up. Made a lot of money on Bitcoin. Now I think it's going to do it again. I think it's going to do their halving, and I think this thing's going to take off and go to the moon once more. Doesn't mean it can't fall first, pop out the bottom, and then go, which is probably what it'll do. I hope it does, actually. Because if it does, <laughs> I'll buy a whole bunch more down here when it turns and starts to go up. Because I got these magic indicators that tell me when to buy and sell. Both pairs. There it is. Three drive pattern coming down. JP Morgan Chase. Let's go down to a two minute chart and see if there's, we might be a little bit late to the party, but we'll see. It's, it's only 8 30. We're only into this thing an hour. So down, up, uh, up, uh, up. It's yellow right now. It's kind of neutral. JP Morgan's the one who came out and said, don't. Don't be surprised if we have a shitty economy coming up. $186 a share. This is going to be a, let's go look at an option on here. It's probably not going to go up. I mean, not with that bad news. Him himself coming out right out and saying, probably not going to do much for us. Has it done all of its run it's going to do today? Is it going to get a little rebound, a little buyback? I don't think so. $375. That one's $244. Oh, that's a call. Land. You're looking for it to go down, aren't you? Yes. 
then you want to put. Oh, okay, put. Volume, lots of volume, lots of open interest. Oh, this one, look, tight spread, $5. That's not a tight spread. $2 is a tight spread. Okay, so we're going to buy this one. Could you buy one and sell one and get into a bull call spread, bear put spread? Yes, you could. Are we going to do that today? No, we're not. We're just going to simple, 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 do a little simple buying and selling of options. That's going to give us a higher delta. See, it goes from a delta of 55 up there to a delta of 41 down here. So delta of 55 makes you more money. You could put it even further, get a delta of 80 way up there, but we don't want to do that. That increases your premium. So we'll do the one, just one tick outside the $335. Do 10 of them land. Do 10 of them. $3,000. You can afford Look, you got $68,000 in your account. Why are you being so timid? Why are you doing just one contract? Why don't you do 10? Okay. Why don't we go in here and do five? All right. And we're going to do market order. We'll just mark. Actually, let's see if they'll, uh, this is a demo account. So we'll see if they'll play with us. Uh, spread is fifty dollars for five of them. That's ten dollars a piece. Let's come down. Let's see if we can go. Let's see if they can do it for us for thirty-five dollars. Uh, yeah, they're not going to do it. Edit. How about forty dollars? Eh, how about fifty dollars? Forty-five dollars. Come on, buddy. Give me my shares. Look, it's starting to pop back up. $45, $50. They should give it that time. Okay, we got them. Okay, so we got five of them. All right, five of them. What about gold? Can we put any options on gold? We're getting up to the top of the first drive. This coming across here. I'm going to call this the opening bell. That's the first drive. That means that box right there, that little entry spot. Brian, you going to buy some gold with me? Right there, that would be, what would that be? Come on, you can label it for me. A1. Michael Bruce already had it. He's like, that was an A1, Lance. You're too slow. Okay, so that means this is A2 right here, right? That right there is going to be our A2. Label it. Label it. Hey, when you're trading real money land and you're sitting here all by yourself, do you actually put any of these labels in? You bet your ass I do. What else am I going to do? I'm just sitting here. So there's your A1. Uh, what are you doing? That's not A1. It's an A2. Where's your A3? Well, I'm going to call this. I mean, look, you still had this little funny thing here, but those are combined. I'm going to call that all A2 right there, and I'm going to call this A3. But it may not be the A3 because it's got to come down and break those blue lights, and it's already extended pretty good, and it's coming down. It looks like it wants to... It's not always as pretty. You have to kind of, while it's building, it's easy in hindsight. A3. We got a couple of. So gold's pulling back here. We got all day. You're going to look back at this at the end of the day and you're going to go, well, man, alive. That was the most perfect Elliott wave in the whole world. Look at that three drive pattern, just like out of Land's book. Why didn't I trade that? Well, because you weren't patient. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I want it to break the blue lights. But that could. If it doesn't break the blue lights and start going up, that'll be an A3. And then we'll look back and we'll say, wow, if it breaks the blue lights, then that was A3. Okay. Well, you're so smart. Come on. This is that time where you just sit on your hands and wait. Wait for the opportunity. Well, there's no opportunity if it doesn't break the blue lights. So we don't need to sit here. We, just, we can come back in a minute. Let's go look at something else. 
Let's go look at. There's nothing really. Ah, there's nothing really fun. Nothing really fun. NRG. Did we go look at NRG? That look at how tiny the dot is. This means nobody's trading it. It's up, but very few. Uh, nobody's looking at it. Nobody's trading it. So it's not going to go parabolic for us. We need big circles like this. Oh, we were going to go just look at Apple again, weren't we? Let's just go look at Apple again. Okay. 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 All right. All right. What are you going to do with Apple, then? I'm going to wait for it to break those blue lights. If it holds this high, if it holds this low right here, if it holds that low and it goes green, if it goes green after that yellow bar, if it goes green after and holds the, above this low, you could take that as a long in anticipation that it's going to break the blue lights and give us the next leg up. That's what all the technical analysts are looking to do. The big speculators, they're buying right now. They're accumulating, going into, well, a reaccumulation because this is this was their accumulation over in here, right? They were buying, buying, buying. And then opening bell, boom, 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 they sold out, and now they're going through a reaccumulation. That's what that's telling you down here, mathematically, of course. So it's still coming down. Let's go see if it's going to break that. Is it going to break right there? You're like, man, Lan, this is like watching paint dry. It's only watching paint dry because you're used to watching this market here that moves like a banshee, like a wild man. All right. You're used to this market. Stock market doesn't move like that. Now, sometimes it does, but mostly it's just kind of a lazy little dog and it just kind of gives you more time to, oh, look at global life starting to rally on us. You, we're down 70 bucks. You rotten dog. Still lower high. Uh, you know what? It's making it. It could be making that little A B C pattern, right? It could be doing this little thing here. A B C, and it's going to go up. Could retrace. But if you look at that daily chart, ooh, that was an ugly daily chart. But we sold it at the very bottom of that bar. Oftentimes, markets will flush, and then they'll kind of come back half. Right? Sorry, didn't mean to hit that microphone. I do that sometimes, and I was listening to the video yesterday. And I noticed that I hit the microphone with my hand a couple of times and you're like, Ugh, it's jarring. Don't do that, Lan. I need one of those fancy hanger things. You ever seen Glenn Beck? He's got this thing hanging from the ceiling. Microphone right here in front of him. Bam, he doesn't ever, doesn't hit it. This thing here in front of me, sometimes I'm trying to work with the keyboard and it gets in the way. The one I have down in St. George comes in, it comes in off, hangs like that, but then it's right in front of me. And I'm like always trying to look around it. So it's time, to, you know, YouTube life, dealing with the YouTube issues. What do we got going here? On oh, look at that. We're up $112 on our JP Morgan Chase. Take it, land. Take it. It's $120. It looks like it's going to turn and go back up again. You're right. It might. But it might not. Patience, Newmont. Okay, Newmont did exactly what we wanted it to do, right? It's This is their first drive. Is it first drive? I'm going to call it first drive because this is the morning bell. So that I'm going to call that A1, even though back here, all this stuff here, this is going to be our new A1 right here. We're going to call that A1. A1 right there. Do, do, do. That means that we're going to come in here. That's A2. And this little hesitation right in here, that's A3. Label it, land. Okay, I will. A2. A3. Right there's our break for A2. And right there is our break for A3. And that means this came back, broke the blue lights, just like a train on rails. Is there something else I can say besides that? It's train on rails. Rich, 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 beyond your wildest dreams. Okay, here we go. 
broke the blue lights. So that is a label it for me. Label it for me, Michael Bruce. What is it? B1. Now, it's not a B1 yet. It's got to break the blue lights to be considered a B1. That's where the B1 is at. When it crosses those blue lights, that will be B1. Okay? It's not a B1 until it breaks the blue lights. Because it could fail right here, and it could come down, and the A drive could completely fail, and it could go this way and never do create the B1, and it would fail on creating the B1. That would be a failure. Label the exit there, Michael Bruce. Give me the exit. What X is this? That's your X1, right? Because it's the first drive. A drive is our first drive, so that means that if we got in on the A1, we'd get out on the first exit, which would be the X1 right there. That's your X1. Now, it could also be an X1. X1 what? Because if the market turns and starts to go down, and it never does go up and break those lights, it's going to be an X1, A1S, A1 to the short side. Am I right or am I right? And if it breaks below this line here, that's not good. That's not good. That's a bad sign. That's a bad sign if it breaks below that little blue line right there. And that's what it looks like it wants to do. What are you going to do with your option, Lance? You got in on an A3, right? Remember, we got on an A3, and I'm like, don't ever want to start a new trade on an A3. Why'd you do it then? Because we're in a class, and I have to teach. We have to do it. We have to do it sometimes. We just have to do it. Global life. The butter global life right here. Came down, but then it went up. It's trying to come back down again. A little bit worried that this might make a break above the blue dots. And if it does, if it breaks those blue dots, starts to go up, we got to get out of our put and get back in with a call. Take a take a shiner. Our JP Morgan's doing okay, though. We're up 112 on old JP. Newmont? Come on, Newmont. Don't give me this. You want to make that nice, beautiful Elliott wave, don't you? Don't you? JP, keep your keep your keep your falling. That's okay. I have a JP Morgan Chase account. I actually like them as a bank, believe it or not. Actually, <laughs> uh, there's a reason why they're the biggest bank in the world. They're they're a great bank. I really love banking with them. Uh, now, that's not an endorsement cuz uh, I hate some of the things they're doing. They're, they've been really good to me. Been a really good bank. Okay, here's gold. Gold's trying to broke the blue lights. So this is what? What, what, what? What is it? What is it? What is it? It's a B1. B1, but only if it breaks those blue lights. The blue light break will be the B1. So that means that X right there, that would be an X1. But we're only in the first part of the day. Where it's only 9 o'clock. Market, actually, I start trading real money about 9 o'clock. Because that's, for me, is when I've noticed that the market has a tendency to start to trade, start to move. I think a lot of people... A lot of traders let that first hour go by, and then they come in and they start trading at 9 o'clock. I've noticed that we get really good trends at 9 o'clock. Russell 2000, Russell 2000. Gold's trying to go again. Just buy your call right now, Lynn. You know it's going to be a nice, big, beautiful three-drive pattern at the end of the day. Why don't you just get in right now? Well, because it usually breaks. It usually goes when it hits the blue lights. And I like I kind of wait for the blue lights because we haven't got much of a pullback in here. 
which you know, it's kind of good, but look at the volume. Boom. Land, what would you do if you did buy an option? Well, we'd come in here. We got five days. We'd go to seven days. Let's go look at the zero days till expiration. Zero DTE on gold. $42. If you're going to trade gold, you might want to do it over in the futures market. It's a little cleaner over there. And we got our margin accounts over there. But what if you want to do it here? What if I just want to day trade an option here? Uh, you got to go to the call because we're looking long. Okay. Zero days to $150. It's going to lose. Um, wait a second. Oh, it's not listed. Premium premium per day. That's gone. It's going to lose all $150 by the end of the day. So you're going to be fighting a pretty strong upwind, headwind. Let's go put it on seven days. Boom, boom, boom. It goes to $380. You're going to lose premium per day, $54 today. That's premium per unit. I don't need that. Premium per unit. Get out of the way. Premium per unit. I don't need you. That's better. That's all I need. I'm happy with that. Theoretical value is 318. We're paying 380. We're paying a little premium for it today. That means they're bullish on the market. Right? If the Kelly Blue Book is saying that the option is worth 320 and it's 380, let's buy one. Let's buy one. It's starting to try to move higher. You got up here, yeah, in here. If you do it down here, oh, that's zero DTE. Cancel. I thought we were going to do seven days. Seven. 152 goes to 387. So let's buy that one. Okay. So that's a delta of 58, which means it's a one option, right? Represents 100 shares. But that's only at expiration. Right now it represents 58 shares. That's what delta is. Delta tells you it's going to trade as if it were as if you owned 58 shares it's going to make the same amount of money as if you were trading 58 shares if it goes down it's going to go 57 shares 56 that's called convexity as it goes down the scale if it goes up the scale it's called convexity so let's go ahead and how many of those do you want michael bruce how many of those do you want 10 12 42 of them how much would 42 42 of them be be sixteen thousand dollars into gold. Forty two is probably a little bit much, right? Gonna have a spread of a hundred bucks. Let's probably go down and let's probably do. Let's look at ten of them. There's one. Thirty three eighty eight. We can do a little bit more than one. Let's go to ten. Ten. How confident are we? Gold's gonna rise. Putin's telling all of his people to buy gold. Buy gold. Three thousand eight hundred. There's 4,000, 5,000. There's a 5,000, 13 of them. Lucky number 13. Let's mark it into that. Should we mark it in or should we? Should, eh, let's just mark it in. They're not going to give it. We're in the demo count. They're not going to do it anyway. It's a waste of time. Come on. All right, gold. We're on gold's gold's party today. We're party party of gold. Seating the party of gold. <clears throat> okay, here we go. We're down 130 bucks because that's the spread. And we just need it to rally, rally, rally. Rally, rally, rally. Why didn't you wait for it to cross the blue lights? Well, because Michael Bruce was in a hurry. He wanted to get in. So said, don't wait, Lan. Don't wait for it to cross the blue lights. Just get in now. I said, okay. All right, Michael Bruce. Michael Bruce is like, what the heck? I didn't say that. <laughs> All right. Let's see if gold will go. We're anticipating a cross of the blue lights and a drive into the B drive. That's what we're looking for. Let's go look at Global Life. Where are we at on Global Life? That's not doing us any favors over here. It's trying to go back long again. So red, red, red. If it crosses those blue lights, we're going to have to take our shiner, take our black eye. But our data dog, oh, it's been coming down. We're up 90 bucks, but we were up more than that. Apple, Apple's still coming down too. How far is Apple going to come down, Lan? Uh, I don't know. Let's draw a Fibonacci ruler in here and see where we think it's going to come to. It's right there at 61.8 right now. That's probably where it'll come to. Right there at 50%. We might be at the bottom. But 
Nobody knows. Why? Because if you turn on your fib lines, you got a 78.6 down here too. You got one more way down here. We don't want it to go down there though. Uh, apple, apple, apple. Apple, apple, apple. A A P L. So what's the news on Apple? Apple stock has 20% upside, according to one Wall Street analyst from The Motley Fool. I hate The Motley Fool. Those guys are fools. <laughs> you know why I don't like them? I don't like them. Uh, you guys might like them. It's just me. It's my channel. I get to say what I like. I don't like them because they, I don't like their marketing tactics. And they're really good at it. I mean, they're great at it. They give you these little things. They're like, oh, and they have these little click clickbait headlines you got to read this thing we're going to tell you about the stock that's going to go to the moon and you're going to be rich 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 beyond your wildest dreams if you just read this little article about our stock and then they give you this 42 page thing and you're reading it and it's like full of all this clicky salesy stuff to get you to keep going and going and you're reading it and you're like all oh, this great research that they've done on this stock and they're going to tell you how oh it's so great 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 and you get down to the bottom they're like Buy our newsletter for $189 a month, and you, and we'll tell you what that stock was that you just spent 45 minutes reading about. And I'm like, you son of a beast, you did it to me again. You wasted 45 minutes on a research document telling me about this great stock, and now I have to pay you $180 a month to get your stupid newsletter so that you'll tell me what it is. Ah, it's the only reason I hate them. It's because they're such damn good marketers. They get me every time. <laughs> Apple signals of AI intent. Unless I should, I should do that with Pit News Magazine. I should be more like the Motley Fool. Maybe I'd, I'd have more than you guys, you five guys who are subscribed to my magazine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We got, a, we got more than that. We got, we got like six people subscribed to the magazine. Just kidding. We got more than that. Maybe seven, seven people. It's a small magazine. <laughs> it's bigger than seven, though. Maybe eight. <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe nine. Price to earnings perfection. Three stocks with ideal P.E. ratios. So Investor's Place says that Apple has good P.E. ratios. J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo City Group report, Yahoo Finance update. You could click on these and go read their articles, but these are just the headlines. Jim Cramer talks keeping faith in NVIDIA and Apple. So that was yesterday. Apple plans to introduce a new AI-focused chip to its fleet of Macintoshes. Do you have a Macintosh? I don't even own a Macintosh. Oh, wait, I take that back. I got one right downstairs here in my house. What are you talking about? You don't have a Macintosh, Lane. You have a Macintosh. When was the last time you turned it on? When I bought it five years ago? <laughs> my girlfriend uses it. All right. Because I didn't think she was smart enough to, to use a PC. So I got her a Macintosh. That's not very nice to say. Uh, here, you're not smart enough to use a PC. So I got you a Macintosh. <laughs> I don't like Macintosh. <laughs> no offense to you guys who love Macintosh. My son loves Macintosh. He thinks I'm a nut for running on PCs all the time, but. Hey, that's the way I was raised, right? <laughs> We're not doing too good. Too, We're not doing too well here on global life. There, it's starting to fall in our favor a little bit. Gold? Gold's not rising like we need it to. Uh, that's not a good sign. It went up and broke the blue lights. Now it's starting to come back down. So that's your B1, and it looks like it's going to fail. B1 failure. We need it to go. Come on, don't fail on us. It's just got to stay above those blue lights. If it hits those blue lights, it's a B1 failure, and we just li liquidate. Get out, take our black eye. We're just not getting any explosion today. We're, this is Today was not the best of days to be doing an example of how to, how to trade explosive markets with options because there just ain't no explosive markets. 
and stay <laughs> still laughing. You, you're, you're not smart enough to use a PC, so I bought you a Macintosh. <laughs> That's not very nice, is it? <laughs> Sorry, all you guys who use Macintosh guys in here. <laughs> uh, Michael Bruce thought it was funny. <laughs> Okay, that was mean. <laughs> Did you guys ever see those ads where PC and Macintosh guys, they had the PC kind of nerdy guy, and then they had the Macintosh guy, and he was kind of this hip dude, kind of a hippie little hip dude, and they would come on and they'd do these ads. <laughs> it was They were put out by Apple, and it was like, oh, I'm all hip and stuff because I got a Macintosh, and then the little nerdy dude was in there. He was representing IBM and the PC world, <laughs> and they had all these ads. And you know why they don't do them anymore? <laughs> they discovered that they were selling more PCs off of those ads than they were apples. <laughs> they had to kill her because it was bad advertising. And people were believing the PC guy more than they were the Apple guy. <laughs> so funny. Sorry, Apple. <laughs> uh, that's the uh, uh, name of the game. All right. Apple's the big the big mover on the market today. We got what's this? AMD's flushing. Oh, look at all these flushers. NVIDIA down. NVIDIA, that's probably in another video. We can go look at that now. Tesla. Tesla. Tesla's still down. You know, I love Elon Musk. I love Tesla. I love all that stuff about him. But I just think because he's got political, it's hurting his stock. I, Microsoft, Microsoft's dead too. Look at that. It's got kind of a tiny circle. Nobody's trading it. Here's Siri, Sirius XM. Oh man, it's dead. That thing's dead. Who listens to Sirius XM? You have to pay for it. It's paid for radio. It's not free radio. I always thought even in the beginning when they come out with it, they're like, hey, paid radio. I'm like, we've all been trained to radio's free. You know, paid radio. It's kind of weird. I guess they do okay, but not lately. Look at their stock. It's down bad. And there's just nothing here, guys. There's not anything for us to look at. I mean, we can come down. What's this one? AMD. Let's go look at AMD for a short, but, you know, we're kind of. Nothing's explosive today. Nothing's moving for us. Advanced micro devices, AMD, two minute chart. It's coming down. Let's go look at it. Long move. Okay, so opening bell. So let's call this our first drive of the opening bell. And it's just kind of wobbling, isn't it? So it's, it's it's down, and then it went bullish, and now it's going back to neutral. It's trying to go bearish again. It's trying to fall right here. So let's go out and do a seven-day option on this thing. Let's look at the puts. $490. Delta of 53. Plenty of volume. Spreads $10. We could buy a put on it. In the money, that's 54. Out of the money, oh, it's too far. Let's go, just go ahead and do that one. How many do you want to do? Let's just do two of them. Let's do three of them. Mark it. It's fallen. It's trying. It's trying to break out of that yellow neutral zone on the Fibonacci ruler. If you take that Fibonacci ruler, it's, there's the sweet spot. Here's our initial target would be right here to the B to the B section. How did you get that, Lan? What made you say that? Well, because what I did is I put this ruler at the top, right? And then the Fibonacci sweet spot is calculated by the bulls and bears, which is what's turning the price bars yellow. So I put them in the Fibonacci sweet spot of the ruler, which is right through there, 61.8 to 38.2. So I kind of just, you know, kind of swagged that and said that's about where the top of the bottom of the sweet spot is, mathematically speaking. So if that's where that's at, 
then that would make our projection be that B line right down here. So that would be our next level down if it follows through. And it's a pretty high probability that it will. I mean, there's an article in Pit News Magazine about it. <laughs> Go read your Pit News Magazine. We talk about that exact theory. Actually, it might not be. I'm trying to think. It might be in this coming issue. Or it might be a next issue. I don't think it's been published yet. <gasps> just revealed a secret to you that's not been published yet. Oh, I didn't buy it. I didn't place the order. Place the order, Land. What are you doing? You didn't place the order. Uh, buy a put. Buy a put. Buy a put. Buy a put. You really want to buy a put? It's backing off. Uh, yeah, we'll try it. We're going to do a market order. We're going to do two of them. Didn't we say two of them? Three of them. It's coming down and hitting that 61.8 retracement right now. It could, I don't know, up, down. It could go right up like this. a decision point for sure. But it's massive down move. I mean, why would it turn and go back up? Well, it would be a butterfly pattern, wouldn't it? What's a butterfly pattern? Well, a butterfly pattern is where it does this. comes down, creates this little butterfly in here like that. Sometimes we want the butterfly to come back and be a double bottom, but we'll see. And then it goes way up, tests this previous high, and creates what looks like, if you do that, a little butterfly. And a butterfly pattern, if it does that, if it turns and goes all the way back up there, tests this previous high, usually it flushes out of the bottom, out of the wing of the butterfly. Question is, where is this thing going to sit right here? We're bouncing off that. You said 61, but it's 38. Well, that's because I drew it upside down. It's like this. And then you take that and center it, get rid of this, center that like that. And that gives you your 61.8 retracement pullback. Buy one of each land, buy a put and a call. <laughs> Don't want to do that. Buy a bull call spread land. I won't do that either. I just want to pick my direction and go. It's kind of a little wedge pattern right there. Indecision, indecision. AMD. Boy, markets are just so quiet today. Just so quiet. Our dodgy, we're at $53. Oh, look at that thing. That's our ABC retracement. We're just letting it eat us up, isn't it? Apple, it's not giving us an opportunity to get in long again. This would be a long position. We could buy right in here on the 61.8. I'd like to see it break the blue lights. Dodgy. Global life. We're short global life. It just broke the blue lights. That's not good. There's our ABC. Label it, Lan. I want to label it. There's our B1. So gold... That was Brian's trade. Brian, this is your trade. I give you credit for this one. Brian is making $682 right now. Nice call, Brian. JP Morgan making $675. Newmont. Newmont's making $34. Why didn't you buy 10 of those, Lan? I know. Michael Bruce said, why didn't you buy 10 of those? I said, I forgot. I just bought one. There's our breaking of the blue lights. See, when it breaks the blue lights, they know. They know. And that's where it explodes. 
See that right there? It exploded right at the blue light break. Mathematically calculated. Right. Boom. That's your B1 right there. Dun, dun, dun. Now we're going into B2. So B2 is right here. Dun, dun, dun. B2. If you like this, if you like what we've been doing today, hit the like, hit the thumbs up, man. Go click that little thumbs up and say, Lance kicking ass and taking names. Not doing so well on his global life, but hey, gold, thanks to Brian, making him a little money. JP Morgan Chase wasn't such a bad buy. Even Newmont's making a little bit of money here, 34 bucks. An old dodgy down here is going to take all of our money away. We've got to stop a break even. Just get out, land. Just take your $24. Nah, what a crappy market. Bye. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Delete. Citigroup. What did we decide about Citigroup? We didn't decide anything. It's at the top of the trend. We don't want to be bullish on that thing. Oh, look, it broke right there. Broke the blue lights. Broke the blue lights again. Broke the blue lights again. What does that mean? It means it's a dead sideways market. It's trying to go it's trying to go down again right here, isn't it? It's trying to flush out the bottom of this thing. It's probably going to break now. Now it'll probably break. Now it'll break. Go short on it, land. Go short. Buy yourself a put option. Seven days, put option. Ninety-seven bucks. I don't want to invest ninety-seven dollars. That's too much. That's too much money. Ten dollars. That's going to be a ten-dollar spread. Market into that baby. Rock and roll. It didn't fail. What's our volume? What did I do wrong? Nothing. Just didn't fail. Delete. Try it again. Buy a put. Buy a put. Buy a put in the money. $151. We'll do five of those. Spreads $10. $3 a piece. What the heck? Market. Place order. There it goes. All right. We got that one. This is what happens when you're kind of right, I guess. Kind of right, but the market didn't go down. It just went sideways. Why don't you want to fall further than that, global life? Because you're at the bottom of the big, long drop. Gold. Gold's still going. 780 bucks. That's our B1. We're going to get a little pullback here. We're going to get a little pullback right in here. We're going to get our B2. B2 is coming in, coming in hot right in here. IBT. We can't do options on Bitcoin. I want to see this thing break out the bottom and come down here and create a low. Then I'll just go buy a whole bunch more. JP Morgan, falling out of bed for us. All right, guys, I've overstayed my welcome. I should be over here in the Real Money account doing this by now, but I stayed here with you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this class, I got one more. Oh, I got to give you a Sunday school lesson. Got to got to end with the Sunday school lesson. Got a good one for you. Capital preservation. All right, set your trading limits. Trading is not about making money. It's about not losing money. And until you learn that concept, you will never make money in this business. Trading is not about making money. It's about not losing money. All right? Don't lose money. That's number one rule. Commandment number one, don't lose money. Okay? I know. Look, we're losing money on global life. $95. Don't lose money. All right. If you guys like this class, 
hit that little like and subscribe and the little recommend thing. Let's get some more people in here with us. This is a great class. We should have like thousands of people following Land Turner. Millions of people. I should have a million subscribers by now. All right. Okay, guys, we will catch you tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow's Saturday, so I'm not going to catch you tomorrow. We'll catch you on Monday, and uh, we'll do it again. This has been fun. Look, gold's up $1,000. Nice call, Brian Johnson. Nice call, Brian Johnson. Brian said, let's buy gold today, so we went and we bought gold. Getting our B2 in here. Oh, that didn't B2. Look at that. That didn't B2 on us. We're still just going up. We're waiting for our B2 to come in. B2 hasn't come in yet. If it does, you could add some more. This is really good doing well. We're up $1,000 in gold right now. $750 on JP Morgan and Newmont. Newmont. $31 on Newmont. Citigroup. There she blows. We're up $27. And Apple, we're up. $200. There, it broke the blue lights. If it would go and break and start, look like it was going higher, we could buy some more Apple. Apple wants to go up. I know it does. Come on, Apple Macintosh. Okay, guys, we will see you tomorrow. Have fun. Not, not tomorrow. We'll see you on Monday. If you liked it, do it. Thumbs up. Thumbs up.